This is what you asked for. One, two, three, five. One, two, three, six. I didn't want to have to do this. And yet here we are. I'll read to you some other responses to this clown statement on international socialists. And you can decide what people think. This is Caleb T. Maupin. On March 20th of 2023, he says, Trotsky's theory of permanent revolution reduces socialism to nothing but a libidinal drive for chaos and rebellion. It takes compassion, kindness, and solidarity out of socialism and turns it into a naked bloodlust. It's funny you would say that about the leader of the Red Army in the Bolshevik Revolution. You sound like some liberal bum at an Ivy League college. That's what you sound like. The first response from Trotskyist Traveler is, this is incoherent drivel. You're not off to a good start, of course. And Carolyn Zane res Zare responds, you are absolutely 100% wrong. <laughs> Diego Rivera says, yeah, Stalin, Mao, and others are the epitome of compassion and kindness with their constant purges, trials, and cultural revolutions. Yeah, Stalin, the, the fucking uh, backstabber of revolution. Hey, guess who doesn't understand permanent revolution? You, bro. Yeah, like, what do you have against Marx, Engels, Lenin, and Trotsky? Because if you got a problem with international permanent revolution, you got a problem with them. Not me. Them. Well, technically, you got a problem with me because I'm all about that, too. <laughs> I think that's the way to go. I think that's the consciousness we need. That's the paradigm we need to be in. Trotsky Botsky responds, The fact that you are saying this about the ideas of a man whose murder was the culmination of Stalin's campaign of killing all of Lenin's comrades and political dissidents is absolutely wild. Stalinists have long since cornered the bloodlust market. Stephen Fields responds, Yeah, like that time when Stalin allied with Hitler and divvied up Poland with compassion and kindness. Militant movement to socialism responds, This is deranged. Funko Marx responds, Point of view. You're about to be asked if you'd be willing to spank him if he's been naughty. Matt Wall responds, Him. I'm a Stalinist. Me. Trying to impress him. I haven't read Marx either. <laughs> yeah, like, did, what, what, what did Stalin have against Marx and Engels and Lenin and Trotsky? I, I, don't, I don't understand. I don't understand. God, uh, Comrade Mac Macron says, Comrade Macron says, Schrodinger's Trotskyist. Both some ultra omega anarchists and some ultra right wing fascist. You're an imbecile and you're doing an extreme disservice to people you're misleading with your fictions. <laughs> Not a positive comment in response to this. <laughs> Another one that militant movement to socialism quote tweets him says this is deranged. Mason says that beautiful sound of clanging pearls like music to my ears. <laughs> Trotsky Botsky. One of the greatest ironies of being a Trotsky is how, in equal parts, Stalinists like to either accuse us of being neocons or ultra left turbo revolutionaries. Colin O'Malley says Stalinists are incapable of telling the truth. Yeah, I mean, they live in a make believe reality. It's folklore, it's fairy tale, it's a mythology. And this, this is what I responded at the time. I was, this is the first thing in the morning for me. Uh, I was just incredibly annoyed. I was like, really? Because I, I don't I don't respond to anyone's tweets, comments down in my tweets or Facebook posts or YouTube community section unless it's like uh, somebody I know or it's just general banter. Nothing negative or dis no dissension. I'm not dealing with that on here. Why would I respond to your response? Your response of my original point. No. I'm just going to say that again later. I'm just going to say the same thing again later. <laughs> so I said, I, I quote tweeted this, which is different. I get it, but still. I said, ah, yes. Spanky T. Maupin wants you to believe that the U.S. government, which has repeatedly helped Stalinists assassinate international socialists, 
actually has an affinity for Trotskyists. Killing them is just America's way of saying, we love you. Get a grip, son. I mean, come on, dude. Come on, we know the score. Internationalists know who works with who. They don't work with us against nationalists. <laughs> that doesn't happen. That's not a thing. The CIA doesn't go looking for international socialists and say, maybe we could use these guys to our advantage. No, they look to help nationalists eliminate us. They say that's the biggest threat. That is the number one threat. The group of people that are calling for the broadest sections and deepest layers of the working class of humanity, students, tenants, and workers, to unite, form like Voltron, form like Megazord, and freaking steamroll the establishment because we have the scientific truth. And the scientific truth is that the international capitalist order, the global economic order of capitalism must be confronted by an international socialist movement. And the only force scientifically capable of carrying that out is the broad mass of humanity, the deepest layers and broadest sections. Once again, students, tenants, and labor, independent labor unions of the rank and file varieties, Trotskyists like to say. Tenant unions and student unions, okay? You democratize your workplace. You democratize your living space. You democratize your learning space. You then unite so that you can coordinate your efforts. What do we democratize all those spaces for? Is it just for fun? <laughs> just so we can vote for some turd every couple of years or some trouser stain every year? No, of course not. All right. If you're democratizing your learning spaces, it's for lower or no tuition. It's for better student benefits. It's for improved learning conditions. Now, if it's your living spaces tenant with tenant unions, that would have been student unions for your learning spaces, right? Student unions, learning spaces, tenant unions, living spaces. What do we want? Lower rent, better renter benefits, and of course, improved living conditions. Makes sense. And then, of course, when it comes to unions, we all know, all right? Rank and file committees, rank and file councils, whatever you want to call them. Okay, worker syndicates, whatever you want to say. We get it. It's higher wages, better worker benefits, and improved working conditions. It's not a mystery. It's the essence of class struggle. Guys, I'm going to leave it at that. You know what's up.